Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Hi, welcome to Seymour's World on Think Tech Hawaii. We have a great show for you today. It's all about you and how do you feel better about yourself. And you know, good health is just a piece of it all. It's how you eat, it's how you exercise, it's everything to do with your daily life. So I have to tell you about my guest before I even introduce you to him. This young man is almost like a son to me. I've known him for many, many years. And he is a uh, influencer of my life. He shows me how to train, he shows me how to eat better, he shows me how to exercise better, and very frankly, at my age, which is well over 70, I feel terrific, and I owe a lot of this to this young man. So let me introduce you to Chris Kodowski. Hi, Chris. How are you doing? Welcome. Thank you. It's great to be here. Uh, you've been on my show before, actually. You've been on twice, right? I have. This is the third time. I know. You've been on from Miami, or was it Miami? Or yeah, it was, it was Miami. Yeah, from Miami, where you reside now. Right. And you were on with Raina Rowland of East Oahu Physical Therapy, right? Correct. Yep. And uh, now you're here, thank you, for the next three weeks, helping me and many other people in trying to improve their, not just their body, but their wellness, right? In trying yep. to improve Absolutely. their health. Absolutely. Absolutely. So we called the show the secret to better health for a very specific reason and that is because health encompasses a lot more than just exercise than just nutrition than just emotions and mm -hmm. all those kinds of things that work absolutely so uh, when I think of you and I think of what you've done for me I feel very very fortunate and I thank you for doing what you have you're very welcome so uh, I'm going to be your guinea pig today, right? Yes. And we're going to talk about some of my problems, which will relate to a lot of our audience's problems as, as well. Absolutely. At, at least 9 out of 10. At least at 9, least out, nine of out of 10 people. Okay, good. So when you guys look at me, don't think that I'm all, you know, aches and pains. I'm not. I actually feel terrific, except for the workout you gave me last night where I couldn't move. But other than that, I feel very, very good. So it's been, it's been uh, wonderful to have you here this last week, and you're gonna be here for two more weeks, which right. is great. So your company is called Influential Health Solutions. I love that name. Why? Because in the business world, that is very specific to your mission statement, correct? Tell us a little bit about it and you. Absolutely. So Influential Health Solutions came about because I started to realize that there was a lot more, like you had previously said, to, to fitness or to health than just eating right and just going to the gym. So one of the biggest components that I started to find out is that everything starts from the brain first. It moves to the body. And then there's this last little thing that we're trying to figure out, too, is the spirit. Okay, so when we're looking at the human body, the body is always going to follow the brain, all right? But then there's this other aspect, there's something that we're always still trying to look for. And when I started to meditate, I started to realize, like, this is actually feeding my spirit. It's clearing my brain and it's helping me to better take care of my body. So when I created Influential Health Solutions. One of the biggest things that I started to talk to people about was meditation first, and then it's clear your brain out second, or at least help your emotions be more calm throughout the day. Now we can make better decisions in our business. We can make better decisions when we go to the gym. We can make, make better decisions when we're gonna eat, okay? so. I started that and it started to work very, very well for me. So that is, that's terrific, Chris. Mm -hmm. And I find Thank that you. you know, I find that um, your your uh, your program is not related. And originally, it was strictly related to exercise because you trained right. Aaron, you trained my son right. playing football. Right. I mean, it was amazing what you were able to do with a, a guy who's six foot five and two hundred and seventy five pounds, and a, and he's like a ballerina. When, you know, when you're finished with it, right? Uh, Aaron, I know you're not like that today, but still, <laughs> when you were training with him, it was really, really amazing. So it's important for the audience to know that this is not a one trick pony here. It's not just it's about not. exercise or about food or anything like that. Right. Right. I started off at the University of Buffalo as a student assistant strength and conditioning coach, and then I actually got a graduate assistantship here with Tommy Heffernan at the University of Hawaii. I ended up getting my master's degree in kinesiology. 
I have trained several very influential football players that came out of the University of Hawaii. Travis LeBoy, Chad Owens, mm. Devon Bess, yeah. Ryan Grice Mullen. Yeah. Those guys, I'm still in touch with most of them to this day. All right, and there was a Big Island boy that I helped become a Navy SEAL as well. And then when I got over to Florida, I started to train a lot of MMA athletes. Robbie Lawler, he was the lightweight champion in the UFC. Mike Chandler also is a champion with Bellator in his weight class. And then I'm also working with a young up-and-comer right now called Logan Storley, who uh, I believe he's 8-0 and right now in Bellator. Wow. So I I've trained quite a diverse set of people, as well as you know modern-day housewives, gentlemen like you who still think they're 15 years old. And, well, uh, I think I'm 20. <laughs> 20, <laughs> yeah. 20. And I'm then getting up there after last night, maybe 20, yeah. A, a whole host of... Uh, high school and collegiate athletes too. And I owned my own gym for a while. I, I, I owned my own gym for about three years. It was a CrossFit gym? It was a CrossFit gym, yeah. but uh, I burned out. I wore too many hats. Yeah. I, I was the accountant. I was the coach for every single class. I was the uh, let me heal you if you have an injury guy. So I was working about 14, 15 hours a day, and that, that could only we sustain it. We talked about that, didn't we? Yeah. Part, uh, uh, just uh, for, uh, for everybody to know, I've been helping Chris with his business and trying to make him understand that you cannot do all that kind of stuff right you have to delegate and you have to run your business like a house right, right. it's got to have four posts to balance the house it's uh, you have to have help you have to have assistance and luckily you have a, a woman in your life who I think is even smarter than you are and she that's is yeah a a Andrea yes yeah, definitely absolutely terrific so Andrea if you're watching the show you should take much more credit than this guy does because uh, really, uh, you two are a wonderful team together. Thank you, I so appreciate that. Everybody wants to know what the secret is. Is there a secret, Chris? The secret is balance, but it's not the balance that we're used to. If we're looking at balance, we wanna say, okay, I'm gonna put 25% of my energy into my business. I'm gonna put 25% of my energy into my family. I'm gonna put 25% of my energy into my body, and then I'm gonna put 25% of my energy into my spirit. So we kind of split ourselves in too many ways where the key is actually presence. If I'm in my business, I wanna be focused in my business 100%. If I'm exercising in the gym, I wanna be exercising, focused on exercising 100%. I wanna be on the cell phone. I don't be like, hey, Jim, John, come on over. Let's talk, let's have a powwow for five minutes in between sets. If I'm going to eat, I don't wanna be on my cell phone. I don't wanna be watching TV. I don't wanna be reading a book. I just want to be focused on my nutrition. I get it. I get it. You see it. what so, I'm talking yeah. about? And that's so true because too many of us try to multitask. Multitask do does not work. at the same time. Yeah. I have some friends actually who multitask in so much. Uh, they could be in the car where their knee is on the steering wheel, their fingers are on their phone, right. you know, texting, mm -hmm. and their mm -hmm. voice is actually talking to somebody on the phone. That's and a disaster say, waiting to happen. No kidding. But that's multitasking to an extreme. But right. you're right. The idea of focusing on one thing at a time is something that I preach in business as well. It's not just in life. It's Absolutely. In, it's actually the way to be successful in business is focus on the task at hand. Yeah. So, so when it comes to when it comes to our bodies, Chris, we'll talk about nutrition afterwards. But everybody is interested in how do you get a body that is not resistant to injury. That's probably impossible, but is working well, especially older people mm -hmm. like me, you know, whose muscles and tissues are not as uh, easy to work with obviously is there a secret to that is there is there a way to make sure that we can uh, work out and do the things we want to do without bending over and screaming in pain all of us right so whenever people ask me about secrets they want to hear something tangible okay but it's really the intangible things that make the tangible possible so you asked me about okay well what's one secret and i said well it's balance right how do you depict balance and you ask me what's another secret if i want to keep my body really healthy i'm going to tell you it's consistency mm -hmm. so if i teach a dog to sit once a week every time i tell a dog to sit it's going to look at me like i'm crazy mm -hmm. okay but if i teach a dog to sit Every single day, by the seventh or eighth or ninth day, He's sitting. the dog is going to be, oh, okay, I remember this. I'm going to get a treat. As soon as, when he says right. that word, if I do this, I'm going to get a treat. Right. So your body's the same way. And a lot of times people, like I said earlier, 
start off doing way too many things at the beginning. Okay, well, I want to go and exercise like a maniac. I'm going to go on an all salad diet. I'm going to do nothing but drink juice every single day and eat and run. And at the end of a month, they're burned out. Right. So to me, like I said earlier, start putting 100% into one thing at the beginning. And for me, that's nutrition. It has to be nutrition. Your cells, your entire body is going to replicate according to what you put in your mouth. Mm -hmm. Health starts in the mouth, disease starts in the colon. Okay, mm -hmm. so everybody out there that's listening right now, the first place you wanna start is going to be nutrition. The second place you wanna start is going to be mobility. For me, exercise is third. And there's been a meta study done showing that people who exercise vigorously for six weeks lose about three and a half pounds. Mm -hmm. People that go on a very, very good diet for their body type will lose approximately 15 to 20 pounds in that time. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times people start off doing something that is much, much too hard. Their body isn't ready for it yet. Mm -hmm. But everybody can make good choices with their food and spoon it to their mouth. You're going to lose a lot of, a lot of weight much, much faster, now we're better able to exercise. You're See so right, saying? that happened to me, yeah, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I've obviously lost some weight in the last few weeks, and thanks to you, and, and I find that the exercise regime you gave me is much better, much, much Absolutely. easier for me. Yeah. Now, we both watched a uh, video from uh, Chopra, right? Deepak Chopra. Yeah, from right. Deepak Chopra. I think it was put out by Ruby out of Canada. That's okay. a company that uh, has this online culinary school. Yeah. And we were both very impressed with it. Here he had lost 30 pounds, gone on a, uh, a, a diet, and you could see his exercise has improved. He says he's able to exercise right. better. And that in itself shows you that's the beginning of it all, right? It is. What you said, putting what you put in your mouth is maybe that first thing you have to do before you decide you want to change your life style and correct. do something different with your life. Correct. Absolutely correct. And I believe in that. Great. Wonderful. Now, let's go on to pain mat. We don't have a lot of time, unfortunately, and you're not here for my next show because I'll be in Chicago. But and we are going to continue this series because I think it's so important that we do. Great. Let's talk about pain management. Okay. What's the, I'm not going to say secret, <laughs> but what's the key to it? Once again, um, well, there's a couple keys to pain management. Number one is truly understanding how the body works. Okay? And when we look at the body, say for instance, if I injure my bicep, all right, people are gonna look, at, if I go to the doctor, the doctor's gonna look at my bicep, he may Hold even. that thought. Let's bring up a picture. Okay. Right, we're gonna bring up a picture of me after a tennis tournament in Florida where I had torn my hamstring, Yes. right? So uh, the setting is I tore my hamstring, I call Chris. Chris says, oh, no big deal, I can fix it. Mm -hmm. my, my brother, who's a doctor, Mark, if you're watching the show, I'm sorry to tell you, but Chris knew a lot more about this than you do. <laughs> Mark said oh, I no. would be out for six to eight weeks yeah. right before, and you said you could probably be playing in two weeks. Yeah. All right, uh, let's look at the next picture. And you could see how black and blue, it's extending all the way down my leg. Pretty bad. Right, pretty bad. And the third picture? Okay, now tell us what you did. Hold this picture there while you're talking. So your hamstring ended up letting go. It ended up spraining and straining really, really bad because the nerves that were telling it what to do were being occluded. They were being choked off. They were being strained. So oftentimes, when we have an injury in the body, it is a symptom. It's not a problem, all right? So your problem was tight muscles in your hip that were not sending the right message to your hamstring. And you told me you reached for the ball right. and you, you really, really had to work hard to get it. So up until that point, the message could get to the hamstring and then you reach the threshold. And so your body what are you said, doing there? What are you doing in the picture? Your body said, this is too much. So in the picture, what I'm doing is I am actually releasing that tight muscle in your hip. And when I released that guy, remember you stood up and you were like, it feels like 60% better. This yeah. is incredible. I don't right. understand. Right. And that's what a lot of people don't understand about the body is we need to focus more on where the problem is, not the symptom. Injuries, any type of body aches, these are all symptoms. We need to find out what the problem is. And in nearly nine out of 10 cases, the problem is alignment. 
So in a case like this, Chris, where you are rubbing another part, uh, I mean, you're not rubbing uh, what's inflamed and, right. you know, the edema is so bad there, obviously. Uh, when you did that, I noticed that you were able to, the next day you came over, mm -hmm. you were actually able to rub where I had the where where I had the edema, where all the swelling yeah, was. Yeah, to start to get that hematoma to drain a little bit for you. Absolutely amazing. And no doctor in their right mind would ever touch something like that. And your brother even called me. He got on the phone and he right. was like, "Weren't you worried?" And I say, "No, because I deal with this all the time, and the result is the same. The person gets exponentially better." Wow, exponentially better. Well, Chris, we got to take a, a short break, and then we're going to come back, and I will be your guinea pig again, and you can talk to people about balance. You all right. talked about that and, Absolutely. and it's such an obvious picture when it comes to me and what what or how you think I should fix myself a little bit yes so uh, amazing uh, we uh, half our show is gone and we haven't even touched on a lot of the things we wanted to uh, we'll be back in a minute I'm Seymour Kazimersky on Seymour's world on think tech Hawaii Hey, aloha, Stan Energy Man here on Think Tech Hawaii, where community matters. This is the place to come to think about all things energy. We talk about energy for the grid, energy for vehicles, energy in transportation, energy in maritime, energy in aviation. We have all kinds of things on our show, but we always focus on hydrogen here in Hawaii because it's my favorite thing. That's what I like to do. But we talk about things that make a difference here in Hawaii, things that should be a big changer for Hawaii, uh, and we hope that you'll join us every Friday at noon on Stand the Energy Man and take a look with us at new technologies and new thoughts on how we can get clean and green in Hawaii. Aloha. Good afternoon. My name is Howard Wig. I am the proud host of Code Green, a program on Think Tech Hawaii. We show at 3 o'clock in the afternoon every other Monday. My guests are specialists both from here and the mainland on energy efficiency which means you do more for less electricity and you're generally safer and more comfortable while you're keeping dollars in your pocket. Hi, welcome back to Seymour's World on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm here with Chris Kadowski, my trainer, my, my physical mentor, uh, the guy who is going to make sure that I can live until 90 and be, uh, actually you're preparing me for water skiing for this you summer, are, right? Yeah, you I'm are laying it on thick today. Oh, right, I'm on a competition this summer and I want to win that one this year yes. if I can, yeah. which will be great. So Chris, uh, we saw what happened when you have a pain, or in my case, it was a horrible uh, uh, jam of my, my strain on my hamstring. Yeah. Now let's talk about uh, the nutrition part. I think it's important for people to understand what you meant when you said what you put in your mouth. Mm -hmm. Obviously, there are so many diets around, and mm -hmm. some guy thinks you should all be plant-based. Another guy says it's you got to have more protein in your body. Another guy, so there's no perfect solution to this, is there? There is. Oh, there I believe, is? Okay. yeah, I believe there is a perfect solution. And when we look at it, you just should never be have to be convinced of anything when it comes to food. So if you see a lot of these products that are out on the market today, they use what we call hyper marketing. They talk to you about how good it is for your gut, how shiny it's going to make your skin, how much energy it's going to give you, mm -hmm. yep. and then you eat it, and you're like all I want to do is just eat more, okay? And when we're looking at food, really, nobody should ever have to convince you of what it's going to do to your health. There should absolutely be no marketing behind it. It should be 100%. But how 100 do you know what, what food to eat? That's, that's what I'm getting to. You should be able to look at it and say, okay, this came from nature. So there's a book that I'm working on. It's called No Longer Nature Made. And I talk about how food is now being made in factories. It's not being made in farms, all right? So if we look at a steak, we want to eat a steak that comes from a cow that ate grass. Why? Because that's all cows eat is grass. Okay, so if your cow has been fed grains, it's not going to have the proper nutrients in the steak to feed your body. What about all of so the antibacteria stuff? That everything. I mean, we, we, could, we could do 12 shows on that stuff mm -hmm. if you wanted to, okay? The other thing that I tell people is you want to eat food that just has one ingredient. So how many, how many ingredients does a steak have? 
It's just meat, it's just protein, it's just fat. How many ingredients does water have? Okay, and people want to look at that and say, oh, but that's really boring. Well, there are de definitely ways that you can spice it up, and that's what I do for a lot of my weight loss clients. But we look at, too, what, how many ingredients does asparagus have, right? And a lot of this stuff, it's, it's innate. We can look at asparagus and say, I know that's healthy for me, but I just don't want to eat it because it doesn't taste as good as my bread that has a whole bunch of stuff on it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So nutrition itself is basically eating, am I, am I interpreting this correctly? Eating fresh food. Eating fresh whole food, as organic as possible. People want to say, oh, organic food, or organic well, food is organic too expensive. What about organic eggs versus regular eggs? Or well, there's a big difference. If you can do a Google search and they'll show you what a cage-free egg is compared to a pasture-raised egg. A pasture-raised egg has hens running all over the grass. Chickens are omnivores. They peck at anything and eat everything. If you look at cage-free, you're going to see about 12,000 chickens stuffed in, into one big farmhouse. Mm -hmm. Now, if human beings were living like that, we wouldn't be very happy. We wouldn't right. be making very good, healthy eggs. Right. They're pecking at little, um, little, little um, things that drop down that, right, that right. give them liquid nutrition. Yeah, it fattens them, yeah, them up. Yeah, it fattens them up. It just yeah. it keeps them alive. But that's cage free, and everybody wants to say, "Oh, cage free is great." But what for about? You. Uh, I'm a real proponent of fish. Right. I happen to love fish and seafood fish, all that kind of stuff. And for me, I always look for non-farm fish. Correct. Is that the right thing to do? Absolutely. 100%. You do not want to have any type of farm fish because they are fed soy pellets and then they're swimming around in their own waste, filtering it all day. Where if you were eating something wild, it's eating an indigenous diet and it's in, for the most part, fresh, clean waters. Wow. Okay, let's talk about uh, your six books. Okay. I'm, I'm so impressed because I remember you called me and sent me your first uh, draft of your first book, mm -hmm. and I said, this is fantastic. I said, this is exactly what you need to do. And now you have six books, and you're Correct. working on a seventh book. Yeah. First of all, where do they find your books? You can find all of my books on Amazon. So Amazon under, yep. is there a... Christopher J. Kodowski. You can just type in my name. Chris Kodowski. Yep. And then they can find it on their Amazon and purchase each individual book, or do they come as a set? They're individual, but when I finish my pain series, that's going to be a set, and my cookbooks are also a set as well. Uh, the one that you're sending to me that is I'm going to read the, on the plane tonight? The Knee Pain Bible. I'm the, currently okay. in the middle of finishing that one. All right. And that's amazing because I had both my knees replaced, and yes. I feel absolutely amazing after it, so yes. it's terrific. We want to talk a little bit about balance. Okay. All right. And uh, we're going to bring up the first, the first picture that you wanted to show. Let's see. Okay. Go ahead, Chris. So when we were looking at this picture right now, all balance comes straight from the head. Like I said, the body is going to follow your head. It's going to follow your mind. When we're looking at this picture, we can see that the head is tilted a little bit to the left. Mm -hmm. This is a problem with our atlas. Our atlas is our first cervical vertebrae. And the atlas is the, what we're seeing down. No, the atlas is a bone. It's our first oh, oh, cervical okay. vertebrae right. upon which your head sits. Mm -hmm. So if that guy gets off, what ends up happening is your central nervous system creates compensation on one side of the body to make sure that your head is still sitting straight. So what ends up happening is your body starts to function in dysfunction. And is that what you see all the red? In, yes. In, in so that? all the muscles that are on the right hand side of the, uh, the picture, they are showing how everything is getting lifted up. Everything on the right hand side is tightening. Okay, and everything on the left hand, I'm sorry, everything on the right hand side is tightening up and dropping right. down. And, the other and side. what that does is it lifts everything up on the so left hand side. You're not in balance, obviously. You're, you're not, not in balance. balance. Yeah. Rather than being straight, everything is like this. Well, uh, we're, uh, we're going to look at the next one because here's a perfect <clears throat> example. Go ahead. So if we're looking at this lady from the back, we can see that the right hand side of her back is obviously higher. Much higher. Than the left hand side of her back. If we go to the next picture, I did a little test and I checked out her feet and oh we God, can it's see like an inch off. almost an inch. Right. Her right leg was shorter by almost an inch and her left leg was longer. And you do you okay. did that to me too, didn't you? Correct. Right. I Correct. remember we're you were actually sitting it. down. Yeah. Yeah, we were working on it. What's if the we next go, photo? If we go to the next photo, oh wow. This is a uh, X ray that she got depicting exactly what we saw in that first photo. Mm -hmm. So her hips tilted to the left. Her rib cage 
tilted to the right, she had a, a right QL, a quadratus lumborum muscle, and it was just contorting her entire body. And that gave her the pain in the back. She and had tremendous back pain, tremendous, wow. tremendous Well, let's back get pain. back to a picture of you and me. And you could look at, uh, and if the audience can see this, I don't know. But if you look at me uh, sitting next to Chris, my right and left shoulder are not equal. They never have been. No. And I've complained to our producer here, can you make my shoulder straight? And he says, no, it's up to you. <laughs> so Chris, what, what happened here? Can you tell me? So same thing like we saw in the picture, and that's one of the reasons why I really liked it. When you're somehow, I, we have no idea how many years ago, you damaged your atlas, your first cervical vertebrae. So your body started to compensate. And the longer that you live with that, the tighter these tissues get. And then when we look at ourselves in the mirror, it's like, why, why is this side sitting higher? Yeah. That's your new normal. And your body's doing this because the head needs to sit straight. But it throws everything off. Throws based everything to, based else on the picture off. So that you show. when you started getting all these issues on the right hand side of your body, you told me the first your right hamstring explodes right. on you, and then my then my ankle blew up. Next was your right side back, right. and then was your right ankle. Right. And I said, wait a minute. I obviously live in Florida, and you live over here. So I'm like, we need to address. This is an alignment issue. This is not just a one time like something's happening. This is an alignment issue. We need to look at the body more as a whole. And when I got down here this time, I immediately, as soon as I looked at you, I was like, why didn't I pick up that left shoulder before? Amazing. So this Amazing. is a major oversight, major oversight. So the idea of uh, straightening your body obviously needs help. You can't do this on your own. It's very difficult. Not right? for the most part. You could get 80% there, but you would need a manual therapist like myself or somebody very skilled in alignment. There are a couple people out there in order to get you to 100. Chris, uh, uh, you are not a PT, right? No. You're not a physical therapist. You are much more important than that in my mind. Thank because you. Because physical therapists have learned everything from their books, right? They've Correct. learned how to do things from their books. You are, in my mind, and it's a term that you coined that I love, you're a structural therapist. Correct. Now, a structural therapist, if you ask for the definition, what do you see as a structural therapist? Well, I'm going to be a little bit coy here, and I'm going to say, how do you describe the color blue to a blind person. It's yeah, very, yeah. very difficult yeah. because they have no basis to go off of. So because this is a pioneering aspect of my field, it's very, very challenging for me to give you a, a very good answer, all right? But when it comes down to it, structural therapy looks at the body as a whole, regardless if it's nutrition regardless if it's pain management, regardless if it's you know, emotions, anxiety, things like that. Mm -hmm. We want to find out the root cause of the problem that is creating the symptoms. And for me, it starts with any type of structure. The foundation of a home, if it cracks, the home is goners, right? The foundation of a boat is the hull. If that cracks, you're going to sink. You got it. So for me, it comes down to structure and it comes down to balance. You need to be completely balanced for optimal health. Wow. Well, Chris, I'm, uh, I'm, unfortunately, that's all the time we have for today. And we haven't even scratched the surface no. on a lot of the things we have to do. So right. I'm going to try to arrange for another show when I get back from uh, Vancouver this week. And perhaps while you're still here, we can, you can come back on again. Absolutely. And I we would can love talk to. About it. Now, before we do that, I want the audience to understand how much work you have done. Okay. I want to do an arm wrestle with you. All right. Now you see that muscle and you see my muscle, <laughs> my forearm, his forearm. I just want you to know just that I can take me. this guy. I can actually <laughs> take this guy. So here we are. I'm Seymour Kazimersky on Seymour's World on ThinkTech Hawaii. We'll see you next week. Aloha. <laughs>